Welcome back everybody. Anyway, today we have a, another cuckoo clock to work on. I do believe they call this the farmer's daughter cuckoo clock. And the box is a little bit loose, but I don't know anything about it. Let's take a look at it. This is the clock. I don't, like I said, I don't know anything about it, but this here, the arms getting ready to fall off. The man's actually falling off too. But anyway, he's supposed to move the pitchfork up and down, I, I think when it cuckoos. And the guy is supposed to move up and down this ladder as it cuckoos also. We do have a cuckoo bird there. It is a bit tight, but the, there's the daughter, and these are broke off, so they'll be glued back on. Let's get that one out. It's tacked on there. That one feels good. Anyway, let's take a look at the inside. The roof is starting to come off too, by the way. It's got staples on it, so they'll have to be re-stapled on. The gong is pressed up against the board, so that'll have to be pulled out so it'll work again. The whistle boxes have been tie-backed. I'm not sure. I'd say this one's not done very well because it didn't open up very much. So we'll have to take a look at that. We'll probably have to redo those. Let me undo the chain here at the bottom and let's see if this clock will do anything. I do believe this clock fell off the wall. The, the box is busted off the a frame here and it just has staples holding it besides there used to be some glue the roof is falling off but let's try to push this all back together and let's see if it'll do anything for me all right you know the music's not ready to go yet evidently It'd sit crooked, but the pendulum does, or the clock does run. Let me turn the hand. Oops. So the bird is hanging up on here. So I have a feeling well, I don't know if it'll do any good to turn it this way or not. This is just kind of a, a mess. Oh, I see the bird actually gets lifted by this bellow, but it has a wire in front also. So when it does lift, Like I said, this box is falling apart. I think I'm just going to take this out of here and deal with it a little bit. I need to oil both sides of the movement as well. So let me take this thing apart and see what's going on for sure. Besides, let's re-glue this box back together again. This clock gets worse by the second. Like I say, I do believe it fell off the wall. All these pieces are Falling or breaking. I don't think some of these screws belong in here. I could be wrong, but they don't match. There's the movement. And here's the box falling apart. 
So each of the blocks are broke, so I'm going to have to put them back together also. As I'm putting the clock back together. This clock definitely fell off the wall. Taking out the music box. Of course the roof fell off. But taking out the music box, it's split in half. And realistically, it's better to split in half now or whatever it's going to do so I can glue it back together properly. All the blocks, this has been around a lot of moisture. So all the blocks that held the movement in, they were separating and whatnot. And so I decided, instead of trying to glue them all back together, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, make new ones and put in there just because that's all the better this here seems to be in good shape and the plastic wheel seems to be in good shape This looks awful rusty, the combs. This wasn't shutting off before. So I'm going to watch and see why. Okay, the reason why it was, wasn't shutting off before is because the box is falling apart and probably pulling on this wire that goes to the movement, which was being pulled. Like I say, every piece of this box is falling apart and I'm working on it. I don't have enough staples because some of them are gone and so I'll tack a little nail in there or whatever. Use some clamps. This here rolls nicely, and this is what's going to make the man go up and down the ladder. This door, or window I should say, is totally made because it's some kind of a clay or whatever. And I might have to adjust it or do some fixing on it because it's kind of too tight it doesn't want to open compared to this original and it's got some of that clay or whatever on the top and most of this you're not going to really notice like i say use a 10 foot rule who's going to be closer than 10 feet to your clock i do believe they made the ladder and it came all unglued. I don't know what they used for glue, but it wasn't very good, I guess. Or they glued it after they painted it, which is what it looks like. And glue doesn't like stain or paint. Let me set this aside. This stuff... I almost... I don't, I've never had one, so I don't know for sure. But it almost feels like... Some of this was made also, so it's not quite right. And it feels like a clay, and like I say, this here feels kind of heavy to be what it normally would be. But we'll adjust that. This leg and arms fell off so it wasn't very good glue whatever they used so I have to glue them back together and they did repaint them so it does help let's see his foot's broke off too and that wire fits up in here that makes them go up and down the ladder and I'd say these wires that are on here I don't think they were, I think they're just pieces of 12 gauge copper wa house wire. As long as they work, that's fine, but 
I'm just saying someone did try to put the clock back together again this here fence I don't think is anything original it's too rough looking and falling apart like I say all this get it's there it gives you an idea of how how to put it back together again and maybe repaint it a little bit prettier than what it is right now well I'm getting closer to getting this thing back together again well I got the box glued together pretty much what I can for now and I want to start working on the movement this movement says 2578 the 25 means it's a one day clock the 78 would be this clock was built or at least this movement anyway was built in 1978 it's a regular East Meckenbecker clock on there anyway I took my pictures of this movement and so what you can do is you can see your wires on when you take this thing all the way apart you've got the hammer the short wire and then the longer wire so pictures will help you there you've got this trigger wire here and this one goes to the music box as in stopping the fan the governor on the music box this one on the back has a wire that comes off the music box and slips into here and I do believe you're supposed to have approximately when this is done cuckoo and the music's done and everything this should that wire that comes through should be about a quarter inch to I, it might be a half inch but I think it's a quarter inch sticking through so that way this has time to move a little bit before it actually triggers the move the music the bird and screwed it when you screw these in you snug them up don't screw them in real tight this isn't much metal here for threading and they don't need to be on their type the only thing they do is bob up and down anyway I got my pictures on the front you should make sure where the bird is being triggered make sure you get good pictures of that so you remember how this all sets up in here I had this pointing down this is the shaft for the hands I had it pointing down when I took my pictures inside here so I could see what the gears look like and when we take this apart I'm going to try to take this plate off so we can keep the gears in place and that would will help you also if you can do that so you know where they go now when we get ready to let's say time this clock the the cuckoo part of it has a star wheel it's got a screw in it and so this is going to be easy to time on that side to time the actual cuckooing I'll, I'll show you the gears inside there and so because it's it's got a, a warning gear in there or a warning pin and the warning pin is what you have to set this thing up so it cuckoos and is able to stop so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take these off the spring here is I'm going to call it tight all it is is the spring comes through the plate comes back around and they wrapped it around this wire here so that's what I consider tied so it didn't come off later I guess we'll put it that way now they got that wire undone and you'll have to take the gong out first you swing it around you unlock it that short pin there is the 
lock. This one is the one that hits the star wheel. And you take your neck, your short pin out, you do the same thing. It has the same locking pin on it. Now your long one, it might not come out that easily because it's going to catch on everything because of this here. We're not too concerned about it. We can set this back in before we put the plates back on. But this star wheel here, thank goodness this one has the screw on it because if it doesn't have a screw, it's, it's uh, pressure fitted and you can get it off by working it back and forth but normally they're on there pretty good i know the screw is loose enough but this one doesn't want to just pop off like they normally do There, we're able to move it around a little bit now. They normally don't come off this hard if they have the screw on there. We're going to go ahead and take this off next, I guess, so I can finish up the back. And with your pictures, you can get kind of a close estimate on the angle you need to have this on because it has to be set just right this is spread quite a bit normally you don't want to spread that far like I say this is falling off the wall usually when they fall off the wall and it crams the wire up this here will uh, squish together and then when you go to run your clock it'll your pendulum will, will start swinging back and forth like this as it's rocking when you open that up just so it has something to stabilize the pendulum so it doesn't swing back and forth so on this side we're going to go ahead and start here we have the e-clip here And then you have your, which you don't want to forget putting this on. This here holds all of this down. We have an E-clip here that's holding this one down. This part here, once this lever right here drops down onto the snail, that will then tell it how, how many times to cuckoo for the hour. Got plastic gear here. And now we have, well, let's go ahead and take our cuckoo bird wire off. Now, you don't want to get carried away with that part because what you're going to do is you're going to be bending these open just a little bit. And if you bend these too much, because it is brass, that they will break. Get a skinnier screwdriver in there. Well, they really close that one up. 
You want to close them up, but you don't want to make them so they bind. Oh, excuse me, so they bind. So you're not going to spread it open a, a ton, just a little bit. Same with this in here. It's open a little bit more. And once you have it open, let me uh, move this spring wire. It's just bent around the, the case or the frame of the clock. Yeah, it'll come off when I take this off. Anyway, what you do is you put a screwdriver in here and give it a twist to finish it off coming out. So we got that one popped out. Got that one popped out. And I think we'll take this off now. Like I say, your your pictures will give you the ballpark of where you need to set these things. This don't have much movement at all anyway. But it's there for a reason. Took a while, but we got it off. Anyway, now we have the spring here. Spring wire that helps push this down. This here has we'll call that the Pac-Man turns it will go around and catch the teeth on the on this part here and slowly move up as that thing's turning with the pin until it gets to the end then it knows when to stop of course you got your little star wheel here two-point star wheel and when this lever drops down drops off the top that tip of the star wheel that's when the clock knows now it's time to start cuckooing but to get this wire off here you're just going to lift it up and bring it around all this stuff here comes unhooked from the frame right here then you get that off so that's about it that we can take off here now we need to take off these clips over here so now they have these two I call them I hate you eclipse they're, I don't think they're actually called E-clips, but they're a booger to get off unless you happen to have a tool. And then they're easy like that. Just set it in there. Lightly squeeze the trigger. And that's stuck. There we go. I'm taking those two off now. These will come out. So on this one, you notice it's got this piece here that goes in the movement. That there is where your warning pin is going to hit onto in order to uh, get the clock ready to start cuckooing. So this one's free now. And there's another one that goes inside the movement that will hit a warning pin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these four nuts off 
And when I loosen up enough to get the pendulum wire out, then I'll pull it out. Usually you can get it off, move it back a little bit and pull it up and it'll come out just fine. Depending on how dirty this is, sometimes your gears will pull up and if you're going to try to get a picture of it, you got to make sure to kind of tap them gears back down so they don't start lifting on you and pull out of place. Now that this is up, oh, we still got that in the way, so we pull that off now. Now we can pull that off. So let me pop this back into place again. And then we're going to take a picture of all these gears. And it doesn't hurt to turn this thing around and take more pictures because pictures are your best friend. Now inside here, which I'll show you as we get to it, there's another E-clip on here that goes to uh, this part here. And this is what's going to lock the bird in place when he comes out the door. So let's go ahead and take this thing apart. Now if you're, you're reading the books on this, they call these trains. The time side is a train and the cuckoo bird is a train. So this has got two trains in it. So let's take the winder off first. Gear looks good. Winder is real tight and locks. Now there is a gear on here that we're not going to be able to get out and that's the one with the Pac-Man on it because I don't take the Pac-Man off. It's wedged on there really good and you can turn it to time it but the more it gets messed with the looser it's going to start getting and I don't want to mess with having to let's say glue it into place because I've worked on some of these where they have had to glue the little Pac-Man part into place again. I guess it's a good thing I'm taking these out because they're, they're feeling kind of tight pulling them out. Now all these gears are oily so there's a good chance this is sprayed down with WD-40 and which I don't recommend because now everything's got an oil coat on it and it's, it's going to collect dust anywhere where you have oil. So we'll leave that in there. This here is for the hand shaft. Now go to the cuckoo side. And you want to check this. Make sure it's stiff and you can't blow it and it flies around. Otherwise you have to tighten this up. Because this is what's going to control the speed of your cuckoo bird. Cuckooing. And if the cuckoo bird sounds like a, a woodpecker when he starts cuckooing this is more than likely what you need to check that uh, the fan center part broke or it just needs uh, tightening. All feels nice and stiff. So this one won't come out because it's got the Pac-Man on it. Now 
This you notice has got a dip in it. That's because it goes around these gears here to be able to work and also has a pin that catches on catches inside there this pin to help lock it into place there's your warning pin besides dust and hair clinging on to the oily mess in here and now we'll go ahead and take that e-clip off here I don't think this has ever been cleaned before because everything's stiff coming off and which shouldn't be even brand new it shouldn't be that stiff coming off I wouldn't think So here, I don't know if you can see that or not, it's got rust on this whole shaft and that's why I think this clock's kind of been abused, thrown outside or whatever until someone decided to start working on it. They probably got it maybe going, hung it on the wall and then when you pull those heavy weights up, it don't matter if they look light or not, the vibration of the weights going up if you just put a screw or nail in the sheetrock, it's going to rip it out and your clock's going to come down. Make sure to find a stud in the wall to nail your clock to. So anyway, these are all fine in here. Like I said, that Pac-Man's wedged on there. And sometimes on timing, if I only have to move it a little bit, I will grab a hold of it and turn it while holding the gear in order to get this timed where it needs to be and of course the pin falls down inside the pac-man's mouth once this is done cuckooing and that tells you it's in time so i might have forgotten to mention the reason why i don't take this off this here gear is pushed on so it's pressure fitted it can come off if you wanted to this has a pressure fitted washer i guess we'll call it and it's pushed down to give that spring in there some tension and that keeps your hands from moving around too easily so they, they wouldn't flop around this here, like I say, I didn't want to take off because you can wear those out. And it's unless it's really wore, this clock isn't going to have a problem with not taking those out. Also, I only use one toothpick. You can see how clean it is, I guess we'll say. This clock, whether it was hosed down with WD-40 or what, I don't know, but it did have something all over it. And realistically, like I say, you need to get that off of there because the dust factor. And anyway, surprisingly, it didn't come out dirty. Normally, you have to change out three or four toothpicks when you go through each one of these and you should go ahead and clean each one of those because your cleaner won't get it out normally and I have a ultrasonic cleaner and even with that they won't come out and as they come get dirty toothpicks are cheap so change them out but get each one of those pivot holes I do one side and I come back and I come and do this side now when it comes to these plates they have a lacquer finish or whatever on them to get them to be shiny. And so in the cleaner, I don't 
maximum I'll put it in there is for 10 minutes. If the finish starts coming off, it kind of looks like hell. And what I'll do if that happens is I'll go ahead and throw it in the cleaner and strip it all off of there just to get it off of there. And then if you want your shine back or whatever, it depends. This These plates re really look good. If you're doing old clocks or some nasty ones, I'll normally use this to shine the plate up. And then I use this to wax it. And this here, when it dries, it's a hard seal on there. And that will make your plates really shine. This has a gold color to it right now. A, 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 I don't want to call it a deep, dull. It's a deep gold, I guess. It, if that finish was taken off and I use those to shine this up, this thing would really look a lot brighter brass color. There again, you don't have to. This is inside the clock. No one sees your movement. It's just the idea if you want to put a little bit of pride in your movement. And with all this on there, I don't worry as much on the back side or the inside, I should say, as I do try to get the this here. Now you notice this here doesn't have much of a shine compared to this one, or it actually looks like a different metal. That's possibly because they didn't care because no one sees it. And this is up against the face of the clock, so you'll never see it when it's put together. This is the only part you usually see. And so you don't have to worry about shining up your gears either, unless, like I say there again, you want to take some pride into it. But I will admit when you use this, these two products, you're going to have to go over those holes again to clean those products out of there before you start putting your clock back together again. When I have to shine anything up, such as this rusty pendulum hanger, I have, this is well used, so it's darker, but it's a reddish brown color, uh, scratchy pad. You can get them at Home Depot. They come in green and brown. The green are a little more aggressive, and so I don't use those. I do use these brown ones. There's what it looks like before I do it. And this is what it looks like after you're done. Normally, this wire here and your lift wires for the bellows usually are what gets uh, really rusty. This shaft was really rusty and I got it the rust off of there so it looks a lot better now. Like I say, you're not going to see those, but it doesn't hurt to get rid of any contaminants that are on your clock or whatever just for the health of your clock. Now when it comes to the gears which they're still in the cleaner I don't mind leaving them in a little bit longer but when the gear shafts especially on your older clocks they'll get rusty and I'll just hold on to the gear and just twist it and get it all cleaned up the best I can. Uh, on here there's not much you can do about the one that's on here still. Normally I'll take a toothpick on these teeth and I'll drag them back and forth on each one of them to get the rust out if I can and also so uh, if there's any dirt that got caught in there because these weren't in as long as the gears themselves. I forgot to mention I have these what I call fancy dancy feet and I use them to hold up so I'm not setting the movement here and this is the way I put it together. 
You can use a little dessert dish, a coffee cup or something, set it on there, and that'll work out just as good. So I've got it together. I haven't got it, all the gears put in yet, but I wanted to remind you when you clean these things, even if you don't take them apart, make sure to oil these here. The reason why is number one you're going to get rid of the drag and also sometimes your clock will start going squeak 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 and that's because this here is dragging on the gear and making that squeaking sound and also this here's the wire if your clock is hanging straight but it won't run this here is what's going to need to be bent one way or another lightly and I suggest you support this part here and bend it that way or bend it this way but level your clock and see what it sounds like after you do a little bend to see if it's worse or if it's better so I have it all together. I made sure to run it and it moves so there's all the gears are in. I tested the end shake and that's moving the gears up and down to make sure that they are fitting decently because you need a little bit of end shake. And before I start putting all the other levers on and whatnot, I'm going to oil my clock. You just need a slight drop of oil and this here it puts out the oil but then it sucks it back up but still I'm going to take a tissue to it because and you dab the tissue on to suck up any extra oil you have because like I told you oil is good but too much oil sucks the dust down into the pivot around the pivot whatever and starts drying up and messing up your oil besides and then you have to clean your clock more often Okay, the little Pac-Man there, you can see that it's in its mouth, well it's not real. Because our warning pin that's on this gear here is past the lever. You see how the peg popped up out of the Pac-Man? Roll it back and you're seeing that right back here is the gear that's got that pin and rolling it back all the way looks like about where it's supposed to be so you bring it forward and you see it's up to there that means this probably made one full revolution and needs to be in which it needs to be backed up or I'm gonna go ahead and do it even though I don't like doing this I'm gonna hold this gear and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this a little bit to put this clock in time otherwise you would take the nut off and loosen that nut, spread the plate apart, and the timing gear, or the warning pin, you'd need to take the fan off, take the gear at the warning pin, the gears that touch other gears, 
you need to pop this out and get it away from this other gear so you could turn it however far you need to turn it but I'm only off just a little bit let's see if I need this thing to turn Not yet. I don't have the spring on this either. Maybe I should put the spring on it because it needs the pressure down. Hook it on there, get it around the frame, bring it around, set it up on there. So I need to turn it just a little bit more as it needs to be all the way in the mouth. So there we go, we got it in time because it goes all the way in the mouth. And because we don't have these other pieces on here, the snail and whatnot, this isn't held up normally where it's supposed to be. So when you trigger it, it's still jerking around and whatnot. Looks like it could go just a little bit more. That's close enough. So now, so let's get these nasty Eclipse back on. I'm not going to say with this tool here, it's so much easier. hard to get them back on their proper place you might have to there I got that one down far enough might, there I got those good enough so far that looks good uh, we need to count turn this so we can get the timing on these gears here so this doesn't drop too close to the side and we'll count the proper hour. This should be seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven thirty. Like I say, that doesn't ever drop all the way down. This will be eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
This should be 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's hard counting. <laughs> I'm getting tired. Anyway, we've got the 12. Let's get the 12.30 in there. Then the 1 o'clock. There. 1.30. This should... 2. 1, 2. There we go. Now I can go ahead and put that flat washer on there and my E-clip. Well, our next problem. This first coup, I'm going to call it. The wire is too short and this is the only one that catches. Unless they're supposed to go together. But why would they worry about putting that one on? It doesn't hit the star wheel. Well, I got one in. A new one. Gone cuckoo. And that's what I want is that last coup to drop down there. Set this for one cuckoo again. Here we go. As fast. Gone coo coo. The coo should go down a little bit faster, I would think, or sooner because he sounds funny probably going coo 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 coo. Gone coo coo, gone coo coo, gone coo coo. And this one's raising up quite a bit, so I need, probably need to trim that wire just a little bit more so it's not climbing so high. It's really moving there. And I'm wondering if that's what they did. And then they got two carried away. Because you can tell someone's been working on this clock. Whether they knew what they were doing or not, I don't know. And besides, it looked like it possibly fell off the back of the shipping truck or whatever for the condition of the clock box itself. So let me trim this and try it again. All right, guys, leg glued back on, his arms glued back on. I use super glue. I don't know what they use. And. This wire here is not glued back on yet. You can see his foot's almost broke off. They used some kind of a, I'm going to say a silicone caulking or something to put this together. And that's not necessarily right, I guess. And like I say, this here looks like a size 12 house wire compared to what was here before. If it works, it works. If it don't, I guess we'll be changing it, but I'm going to try to glue that one back on I got the this glued back on I will admit I used uh, hot glue to glue this on just a, and his thumb was starting to come off so I just squished it in the hot glue this window that's made out of this clay or whatever it would bind up and whatnot so what I plan on doing is making a wood door and just paint all of this on there on the wood door and then it's just got a peg there and there that hook into the door frame or window frame so now I'm gonna go ahead and rebuild these because these they don't open enough for one and normally you don't want them to open more, more than that anyway, but it doesn't have any more room for leeway for the thing to work right. 
and it's got this stuff on it, so I'm just going to rebuild it. This one could be good. I'll think about that whether I want to rebuild this. It might need a another a coin on top of it or something because it just doesn't have the strength. So right now I'm busy making the windows and the parts that catch the window. This is one of the original windows. The other one was made out of a some kind of a clay. And I figure if I can come close to doing something like this, but make it out of wood. So that way, well, for one thing, it'd be lighter. But uh, let's see just how good I can do or whatever and see if it works out for the clock it, it can't hurt compared to what it was well i got the chains installed just to make sure that there's no damage going on to the clock even though everything's inside here and i did get the windows new uh, doors or windows painted and they're not the gray, I used the uh, purple. Slowly coming along. Well, I'm getting closer, but I still have to get the clock to cuckoo and lift this easily and also to get him to go up and down. Right now, I'm having a problem with the rubber wheel not wanting to drag on the chain and move him up and down. So I pretty much got the clock together. The only problem I'm having right now is the man, the wheel won't drag this up and that might be because I cleaned the chains and then I waxed them and that might have been the mistake on the one that goes to the music. So let me turn the hands. This does not have music on the half hour, the best I found out. Oop. That's how I get my fingers out of the way. When it starts up, ramps up. That sucked. So I didn't know, but from the guy's arm is this wire here and your cuckoo or your bellow, we'll call it wire, needs to go into a groove like this so it can slide back and forth. It originally, or it has a loop there in the end, I thought it goes in that loop, it'll bind up because this wire needs to move back and forth in here. Also on this clock, I need to make sure this thing 
ticks properly and I use a level to get the good ballpark and what I'll do is I'll hold the clock because I need to see which way I need to bend it and I'll center this bubble and of course I need to put a weight on here let me stick this one over I just have temporary weights on it right now So the where the this pendulum wire, that's not the one you bend. You bend the one on the back of it, and you don't want to bend the verge back there. So you want to use your two fingers and your thumb in the middle to bend it whichever way. So now I have to put a pendulum on here and see how well it runs. So with the pendulum on there, I'm not having a bunch of success because my I'm not holding this level per se. So there it sounds what I consider decent at least to be able to test it on the wall so now I can put the back door on and try this out now this pendulum is one of those plastic ones there's they have a piece of tape on here possibly because they they don't know if they broke anything but it, it's not holding on like it's supposed to It's got grooves on here. I don't know if that's for your own personal use to see how many grooves you might have pushed it. But this one's not coming through. Oh, it's just stuck. So now I can move. Gong. You need to hold your board up and down and make sure the gong isn't touching. I had to bend this wire out in order to get it off the board. I also had to loosen this screw so I could get it in the area of this little, we'll call it window here. And normally you don't have to mess with it, but this clock has had a few problems. And this here hammer was stuck clear down here. I had to actually bend it up so it's close enough to where I can see it through the hole here. And I can see it right here. The springs right, or the gongs right here. And so Normally, you'll bend your gong up So I'm really close I might as well put the Get this thing to cuckoo and listen to how well it sounds.
single cuckoo's not going to do it for me. Nope, it's hitting too hard. There, now let's try it. Well, that's going to be good enough for now. It feels like a really fine adjustment in there. So he doesn't work yet because I haven't cleaned the chain yet to make sure it has a dry drag to it. The rubber wheel inside, I'm going to clean also with alcohol and a Q-tip, but I haven't done that yet. So he would go up and down like he's supposed to when the music's running. And of course the door sticks. So I've always wanted one of these clocks just because they were so unusual as far as I was concerned. The only thing I don't like about this clock is the farmer and the guy climbing up the ladder. I'm not sure what they're made out of, but they seem to break really easy. So that's one thing to look for if you're going to look for one of these clocks and plan on buying it. Maybe question if they've ever fallen apart on them and they've been glued back together and how well have they been glued back together. Anyway, it is kind of cool. I did make my own door or windows open uh, myself because I needed them to match and of course fixing the clock. <laughs> anyway, don't forget to subscribe because it's free. Give me a thumbs up if you don't mind, because that seems to help. And until next time, God bless.